What's going on, everyone? This is Jordan with Conqueror Trading and Investing, and we are about to get started here, taking a look at what is going on today in the New York session. We're going to start off with uh, the calendar. And this earlier this morning, we did have some news on the Canadian dollar, and that was the unemployment rate and the employment change. Those numbers came in below expectations. We're going to find out how that's affecting the Canadian dollar. Uh, the other thing to note, we do have what seems to be a uh, risk on day. We have the U.S. dollar is the strongest currency, while the New Zealand dollar is the weakest. This largely has to do with a bit of, uh, once again, the U.S., China, and USA trade deal talks, which seem to maybe not be going as well as planned, at least today. And we talked about that yesterday. We said that if any reason the talks were to begin having a uh, more of a sour tone to them, that the best play would be against the New Zealand dollar. We noticed how when things were going well, that it was the New Zealand dollar that was the weakest. So therefore, when things actually started to be risk on, you would see, um, sorry, risk off, you would definitely see the New Zealand dollar suffering the most and that is playing out today. All right. So we do want to see, we see have, we have the dollar, the strongest today. We want to just start off looking at the DXY really quick. And we can see that out of this range right here, we do see that price is definitely, definitely taking off. And we expect the first test is going to be around the, the 99 level. This is playing out uh, across the board. Yesterday, we were looking at, at gold. And that is continuing today. It has broken down below the 1460 area. It's currently tra no, trading back up but to that level. So whether or not this, this holds today, this area right here, if, if this rejects this area right now, which was that little breakout that we just saw from this level here, and if price does reject off this and goes on making new lows, that's a good opportunity to get low. I, I did actually, and I do, I have that open euro, euro, US dollar position. I was stopped out of the US dollar, Japanese yen. I have a very small piece up here from 1480 that I didn't even realize during the New York session. It was a live order that went in. I got in at uh, 1480.08, and which was a break right over here. And I, I'm, I'm holding that position to see what happens today. If we start trading back above the 1460 area, uh, during this session today, I will take profit. Otherwise, I'm going to be holding that and looking for a test down anywhere between the 1400, the round number, the whole number, and up to uh, 1430 area. So we'll see how that develops. Also, looking at the euro US dollar, um, this trade is still going on. We, I have the first take profit area to look at down here around um let's see this trend line's coming in at uh 1.10135 and when price and if price does reach there i will first consider how well it's moving what time of day it is and whether or not i'm gonna take profits there um more likely down a little lower to this trend line right here the support area i have right here and if we do blow past this area, uh, which you can see is pretty nice support, at that point, I would then be holding that for a longer trade. Right now, the US dollar has a lot of momentum behind it. I don't see any reason to get out of those dollar positive trades. Um, now, let's look what's happening with my US dollar Japanese yen. Again, uh, let me just get rid of that true trend. We, we're going to first, we always first look from the top down, looking at the daily time frame. Without the indicator, we're able to see what is going on. And then we could always add the indicator to give us a little help getting into the trades via entries. This is right now, we could see yesterday after we, we, we closed our time together, we did see that the US dollar went on and started making and climbing even more versus the yen, breaking out of last week's range and breaking out of what was the resistance over here. So this blue box is last week's range. This was the other resistance. And 
you see price right now is currently trading above both those things or right about the top of both of those things, which is definitely positive and bullish. Um, we do have, uh, well, we have the dollar, the strongest. We also are seeing yang pairs strong today. And again, that's, that's definitely US China related. Um, but so this looks like you got the, you're collecting the swap on this trade. If you're in this trade, you, you know, I did again, unfortunately due to poor stop loss placement, get stopped out of this trade. If you're in this trade, this is a nice hold right now as well. I would be interested to hear where your stops are right now. Those who are still holding that pair. I'm going to move over here. We had the news out of the uh, US dollar, Canadian dollar, which was definitely negative towards the Canadian dollar. And we could see that price is reflecting that right here. Now, two things. The first thing is that we've just touched up against this resistance and sell zone that we were waiting for. Now, we are at the very bottom of it. And if we do break above here, right, this is going to obviously probably most likely we're going to get towards the top of that range. Being that we're looking at the US dollar seemingly resuming its really uh, multi-month, several month and several year uptrend, uh, it looks like the dollar is going to be making some more gains in the near term future. I'm going to continue to wait here. This would be the aggressive entry, right? Maybe some folks got in down here, right? We were waiting. This is our first signal to begin watching. It's a little early for me yet. There's no way I'm going to be looking to take a position until we get up at least halfway into this range. And then in this upper half, we'll talk about how uh, I would layer into that position. And yes, at that point, it would be against the trend. You would see that the true trend is positive up in here, right? But we're planning that trade out ahead of time. That's how I would look to play it. The only time I would begin actually looking for, for long dollars on this pair would be once we cleared this big sell zone over here and we were up into here. At that point, I would be using the entry CCI and the true trend to trade that pair. As of right now, I'm just waiting, waiting like a stalker, a cat in the woods to get into here and to be able to get some profit on that. Let's look at the Euro Japanese yen. We are seeing definitely some strengths on the yen pairs today, but we're still just trading now towards the bottom of this range here. We did on yesterday break wick down below that support over here, price held. But well, once again, real simple, we're within this three week now consolidation period, consolidating these huge gains towards the top of this channel, right? But right now, and right now, we're in the exact middle of this channel. We're in the lower end of this range right here. This is no man's land. There is no trade to take here right now. Uh, there's nothing to watch. Pulling up the true trend, right? We're, we're positive. Th there's nothing here. There's, you know, there's nothing at all. So seems like the theme of the day so far is just holding on to those who are in that US dollar, Japanese yen long. Uh, those that are short the euro US dollar and those that are short gold. But I do not see any opportunities yet so far as we've just looked at a few currency pairs uh, for this morning. So this Friday morning, it looks like we are managing and hoping, holding open positions, deciding what is happening next. And this look, we, we spoke about this yesterday. I'm sorry. The first thing that, that obviously I saw is that we broke this trend line. We said, if we said, we talked about how closely related the Australian dollar is to the, to the Chinese economy uh, because of their geographic locations. And uh, China is obviously Australia's largest trading partner. And, you know, look what's happening today. We have broken below. This looks good. This looks like an opportunity. Um, this is where we need to, if anyone's looking for a trade this morning, this is where to focus. First, let me, let me begin getting over it. Well, first of all, right now, we're about to make a lower low than yesterday's uh, daily price bar. That's going to be a signal for a lot of traders who are going to be exiting any long positions. We had this trend line here out of this channel, the support line, the support trend line, the lower trend line which broke today. And then this trend line too broke today. 
we were looking at both of those on our weekly analysis. And being that both of those have broke, this is now absolutely bearish. I want to go down to the eight hour time frame and then pull up the true trend. We can see it's still positive, right? But it is rolling over. This line needs to be extended further because what is going to happen next is uh, most likely, unless this just begins to free fall, which I, I don't know. I mean, we do have a strong dollar today, but I, I expect what will happen is most likely the, the support that's broken is then tested to see if it is it become resistance. And you could get the test over here on this trend line, or it could be over here on this. What will support is now resistance. At that point, the true trend is going to be rolling over. Um, on a, since it's Friday, I don't see any need to get into this position today. Uh, we could just wait a little bit, a little bit longer. Uh, we are now looking for shorts on this pair. I know the true trend is still positive. By the time we get into any short trades, because I'm not I'm taking the short now, I notice now this has become, you know, because we've broken two support lines, that this has become uh, negative. This, we're looking for shorts. We're looking for sells. But we're going to wait and we're going to get in on the right area. Similarly, how we did on the year, year US dollar, on the break of the trend line, which we were looking at going into the, into the week, we were bullish, but we knew if this trend line broke, we would be looking for shorts. I didn't take the trade up here. The best entry that could have happened on this pair would have been you had the close below the, the trend line, right? That's a signal that you're now looking for shorts. And then on that test, which was rejected, well, that's the best entry, right? That's the best entry. I didn't get into to over here. We had the entry CCI pulled back. I got in on this price bar when the trend resumed. Uh, I was lucky to, lucky to stay in the trade on this price bar, and it's now working out well into profit. Similar play right here. Right now, we have that sell signal that we're looking for shorts. But we're going to wait that out and see and make sure that develops and to something that's moving with momentum as opposed to just a false signal. Good morning, Peter. How you doing? This is obviously something we were looking at yesterday. We do have, well, a couple of things to notice right away. The first thing I noticed looking at this pair is that I know that the US dollar is strong today. However, the pound is holding its own. It's almost it's almost uh, exactly where it opened. Um, and that's a sign that the pound is showing some strength. This support right here that everyone is looking at, that support line right there, I have it in at 1.2789 is still holding. Do not get short this pair in anticipation of a break of that support because it might not break. Uh, always wait for confirmation. If this does, however, break, this will be apparent, even if it breaks today. If it breaks at all today during the New York session, it probably will get some nice follow through. So this is a pair to be stalking, to be watching. I have the lower highs drawn in. So this is a bit of a descending triangle forming right now. I'm questioning whether or not we do get a low, another lower high over here. Um, but again, the play is on that break of support. Hello, Hanero. Welcome. Glad to have you here with us. Looking over at the pound, Japanese yen. And again, I see pound strength. Why do I see that? Well, I know the Japanese yen is strong today. All pairs are down against it, except here the, the pound is actually trading above its open. So that's showing me that the pound is pretty strong today. This is dead center in this consolidation range going on three weeks now. Well, this is like a spring being pushed down and coiled. It is getting ready and set to explode. And whether this breaks up or down, we should get a nice big tradable move. But right now we are not getting any, any indication of which way it's going to break. There is no trade to take here yet. We're simply watching on the positive note. Again, we're consolidating towards the very top of this enormous thousand pip, thousand pip move. And uh, why it looks healthy, 
if the if the pound breaks down against the dollar over here, most likely the pound Japanese yen is coming down with it. But again, there's just no trade there. Okay, back to our euro pound trade. We're just waiting and waiting and waiting on this one. We're not looking for any type of signal until we get above this line all the way up here. If we do get above this line, we will be looking for our longs, which could be a good trade. Right now, what looks like happening, and we're seeing that pound strength play out against the euro also today. Euro is weak um, versus the dollar, weak versus the pound. If we do see a test of this trend line right here, which has broken, it's been violated, a test off of that, and then we start coming back up, we could get in lower than here, only if the trend CCI turns positive. So technically speaking, a test, a break of the trend line, and then a test of it to make sure that that, what, that it becomes its new support. If that support is then verified and then price starts rising, we will get in on, on a trend change. And that will be an excellent entry, obviously better than one up here would be. We're just seeing uh, Australian dollar weakness across the board. Obviously, there's nothing even to really look at too much here. Um, the only thing that I do notice is that this pair broke below last week's trading range in this blue box. This pair has came down, uh, tested up that top, that breakout, that breakdown, uh, and is since now coming up. There's no, there's no edge here, right? So far, the pair to be watching today is definitely the pound versus the dollar. If we do get that break, doesn't look like we're going to be making any higher highs than the previous price bar, uh, even on a smaller time frame, the eight hour. So that would be an aggressive play. I think most, tr most traders right now are looking for a break and are pretty bearish on this pair. So if you do get, especially on a day where the US dollar is showing weakness, if the pound starts making higher highs versus the dollar, well, that's an aggressive entry. Not only that, you have your stop loss down here below the break. You know you're wrong right away. So you're looking at um, looking at about a, a, a 20, 25 pip stop loss. And then you have a take profit somewhere up here to be safe, right? That's a nice, that could be a nice little day trade scalp to be looking at. And there's nothing going on at all on, on the pound Japanese yen. I'm holding my, my short US dollar uh, versus the Euro and the gold. I wanna look at Bitcoin this morning, which has come off a lot. Uh, that's trading up below that 1460 area, which is showing to me that, well, I need to, to see what's gonna happen, but I will get out of this trade earlier than I would the Euro US dollar right now because the Euro US dollar trade is falling more into profit and this is holding above the breakout still this looks good the us dollar japanese yen for those holding that let's take a look let's move over to bitcoin i'm going to look at a 12 hour chart which is what i trade bitcoin at using my uh, trend following strategy we discussed that yesterday together um just what I know, I mean, obviously we've stayed short. You stayed out of Bitcoins. And I do see right now that this support is being tested and quite possibly could hold. I personally, I do expect that Bitcoin is going uh, over the next six months, just trade slightly up towards 11,400, where it should be in May of 2020. Uh, so right now, um, a lot of traders, Probably got shaken out of some longs over here, uh, but it does look like that support is going to hold. No tradable events happening. We're waiting for a zero line cross. This is on the True Trend BTC. It uses the 333 period setting. We're just waiting on the 12 hour time frame for a zero line cross to get back into Bitcoin longs. And if, and if there is a big move that I don't expect one to happen before May, but if one happens, I'll definitely be in it and why the trend is red, I'll be on the sidelines. 
call him back. <laughs> we have, I want to check out the Australian dollar, Japanese yen, and New Zealand dollar, Japanese yen before I take any questions and look at charts with you guys. We're going to pop back back to the daily time frame. And we see that, well, we see a lot of strength on the Japanese yen today versus the Australian dollar and the New Zealand dollar with the New Zealand dollar being the weakest. If you're looking for any type of trades, um, I, I do see the New Zealand dollar Japanese yen as one to look at more so than the Australian dollar Japanese yen. So let's focus here. Uh, and let me tell you why. First of all, we had the Australian dollar has been strong this week uh, against the yen pairs, the strongest pair against the yen pairs. It broke out of this multi-week range, but is now back into that range, right? So whether or not this is a false breakout, it's looking like it, but until this area is violated, I would not call it a false breakout yet. However, the New Zealand dollar never broke that multi-week range. It never broke out and it's now trading towards the very bottom of this range. We want to jump down to the eight hour and pull up the true trend and see what's happening. We're about to get a zero line cross. So the safer play, obviously, and I'm sure that all of you see it and know it, is that we're waiting for a break of this range. The true trend will then roll over negative to begin looking for our shorts. There's no reason to get short preemptively. We, we, we just need to wait. You need to practice patience. You can't, if there's no trade to take, then there's no trade to take. Um, again, so far today, the only pair to be watching seems to be the pound US dollar, but it's more about managing positions. It's more about holding any open trades from earlier in the week. The ones that we have all taken and been looking at is the US dollar, Japanese yen, the euro US dollar and gold US dollar. So the, right today, the name of the game is just trade management. Uh, looking if you're going to be holding longer, getting out of any positions, um, and that's it. There's nothing else. There's no new trades to be had. It is Friday morning. We are going into the weekend. I always uh, hold positions going into the weekend. Um, if you know, so I'm, I don't. I don't close all my positions before the weekend. I have two open positions, and I am holding them. The only one I'm looking to possibly exit is right here on gold. If this 1460 level does not, holds, right? We had a break below it earlier today. Now we're trading back above it. If that holds um, sometime in the next two and a half hours, I'm sorry, time is at 930 Eastern time. In the next 90 minutes, I will close that. If at 11 o'clock Eastern time, that is that is holding, I will close that trade. Uh, and then on the euro US dollar, that's just trading at its lows of the day. There's, I'm going to be first looking. I have my stop loss in up here. I'm looking at this first light green area to see whether or not I want to look at taking profits. And I'll have a heavier consideration down here at this line, which is pretty heavier, heavier, heavier uh, support. So that's what I'm looking at today. What is everyone trading? Does anyone have any questions? Anything they want to look at? I'm going to be preparing later this afternoon the weekly forecast for the week ahead. And um, that's, that's released tomorrow morning. Obviously, we're not going to do any live streams over the weekend, but we will again on Monday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern time. We will, the, the weekly forecast is absolutely uh, a fantastic video to watch and it really helps us, helps you, helps me prepare for the week ahead. I know what's happening going into the week. I have the, the exact pulse of the market and it's really easy to go ahead and, and come Monday morning, know what my plan is and take trades accordingly. Definitely check that out. Pretty quiet day, except for these, these open trades that we have going on. Uh, you, what you need to do is you need to have alerts for pairs such as the pound US dollar. Uh, 
if it if you if it breaks below this this line right here we have at 1.27989 you want to have an alert go off you could set alert it's on trading views it's really simple you just could right click it and i could let's say add alert Oh, that's not going through. I don't know why. I'll look at that again in a moment. Sure, absolutely. Let's take a look at how I use the CCI. Um, you know, there are two CCIs that we use. We use the True Trend, which uses the 370 uh, period. See this blue line here? This is the three period. It's the entry CCI. And over here, this, this other bar here, what's green or red is the trend CCI. We also use this trend, uh, true trend BTC, which is just the th 303rd period. There's a video specifically on this, and this just trades the zero line crossovers. So let's talk about how I analyze using the true trend here. And I'm gonna go look at a recent example over here. Now, it was, I was waiting here on the Euro US dollar for this trend line to break. And once it broke, I knew that we would be looking on the short sides. So I didn't take the break of the, of the trend line itself. But then what happened was shortly thereafter, the true trend turned negative. You can see it right here, turns negative. On this price bar, this was during the live session on, I believe, Tuesday or Wednesday morning. And I said, look, the entry CCI is pulled back versus the true trend. The true trend is positive here, but it's hugging the zero line. Uh, I know for all intents and purposes that it's still giving a sell signal because the entry CCI is pulled back against it. Actually, it was on, on Tuesday morning when we did have this break and cross and the, the true trend crossed the negative side. I said, do not take that trade. Do not take that trade because you see the entry CCI is in the direction of the trend now. And normally what happens is traders, they follow price, they follow price moves and momentum, they get into the trade and what happens? It immediately starts moving against them, right? So I didn't take that trade. And then the next day we were looking at this and I said, okay, now the entry CCI, this is the blue line. This is what we use as a gauge to get into the price. We wait for it to be pulled back against the trend. And that gives us a better opportunity to get in. If you go over here and you look every time the, the entry CCI is facing towards price, almost every time it then pulls back. Over here, you did have, there are times that yes, oversold remains oversold, overbought remains overbought, right? But most of the time, if you're entering a trade, when the entry CCI is in the direction of the trade, price pulls back. Uh, over here, you do have uh, one of those occurrences of oversold remaining oversold. So what happened here was I had entry criteria because the entry CCI was pulled back versus the trend. I waited then for price to give me the, the entry into the trade. Once price on this price bar right here made a lower low than the previous price bar, that was my entry to get in. Now, it happened again the next day. The next day, you could see now the trend is definitely picking up. It's gaining momentum as the histogram bars are increasing. And then over here, you had the entry CCI pulled back against the price. You don't even need to look at price. You could just look right here. This is this on this price bar right here. I know that price had come back up. And now the price is overbought near term versus the downtrend. That's giving me trade criteria to look for an entry. And then the entry was again on this next price bar when price took me back into the trade. And that was also, you had two entries this week here and here to get in towards that trend. You could just take also uh, the zero line crosses, right? 
uh, a new trader just taking these zero line crosses every time the true trend cross the zero line is going to get them on the right side of the market. And real simple, just by having the true, a lot of traders are in a trade off. They don't, they don't know if they should be in the trade or not. They're asking. And first of all, if you don't know if you should be in the trade, that means you didn't follow a plan getting into the trade and you should not be in the trade. But more importantly, just pull up the true trend, whatever time frame you're trading, look at it. And if, if it's positive and you're long, then, then you're good. But if it's positive, if the true trend is positive and you're short, that's a clear sign you're on the wrong side of the market. I'm obviously very interested in what's going to happen in gold this morning and whether or not this 1460 line is going to hold. Everything else looks like it's on hold. The US dollar, Japanese yen is definitely still a hold, as well as uh, the year US dollar is also a hold short. Those trades look like they have more room to continue. I'm hoping we get the breakdown below this 1460 area here so that I can continue holding this trade. But if not, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take profits. Absolutely, absolutely, that's what we're here for. We are here uh, to share together, to learn together, uh, to build community. Any other questions uh, or any other pairs that are being watched this morning? On my end, now we've covered everything. It is a Friday morning and it happens to be a slow one. Uh, again, it's just look like we're, it's just managing the three open trades we had. The only two tr pairs to look at is the pound US dollar, possibly, or um, the New Zealand dollar, Japanese yen, but neither one of those unless the pound US dollar breaks below this support line would be a tradable event for me today, being that it is Friday going in to the weekend. Uh, open positions that are uh, have no problem holding, but taking new ones this late in the week, that's not something that I'm looking at to do unless something is really trading and giving an opportunity. Since things are a little slow, I do want to take a look at reading between the, the headlines. The White House is optimistic about some kind of US try, try to trade deal, but we do see uh, China's Global Times editor, this guy tweets a lot, is <coughs> criticizing recent Secretary of State um, Pompeo's comments that's showing some friction and that must have been after he spoke in Germany this morning. Um, it was then on a different website this morning. Right here. So it was the head. <clears throat> it was Navarro who doubled down on the trade deal report. Uh, saying only Trump can remove the, the tariff. And this was some pushback versus the United States. There, he was talking about how China seems to be negotiating in public by releasing headlines and news reports that the US was looking to remove tariffs. And then here you have what seems to be some sort of, of vague denial. All of this means is that, you know, you can't trade on the US trade uh, you can't assume that there's going to be a trade deal and trade on that alone. Again, you have to be really careful when you're trading pairs such as the Australian dollar and the Japanese yen, which are tied so closely to these headlines and news events. And you can take things technically as they happen, but at the same time, technically this broke out yesterday. 
right? Technically this broke out yesterday, but at the same time, we, then we got some trade trade talk headlines and it didn't hold. On the, <clears throat> uh, on the flip side, we had other pairs such as the US dollar, Japanese yen, Euro US dollar, uh, you know, which seemed to be also technically showing nice setups, but held uh, a lot better. And we looked at this pair and, and we said we were going to stand the side on it yesterday. We saw what was happening. We saw it was breaking out, but we also determined that it just made better sense to stand the side that wound up in our favor. We got, we got lucky on that one. Yeah. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be, there's nothing to scalp this morning. So I'm not going to be looking at that with you. There's nothing moving uh, in order to scalp, you know, on the one minute time frame. intraday, you need to have some moving markets and, and we yeah, Peter, we'll get to it. It's, it's definitely not the type of day for that. Um, I don't, I don't trade the London session uh, discretionary live with these setups that we share. I trade the New York session. Uh, I trade the, I don't trade the Asian session. I skip that, but I do trade the London session overnight uh, through automated system. And, um, and that's it. And you also look at the time of day to see, yes, I, on, on some of my automated systems, I am skipping the lowest, lowest volume portions of the day, which tend to be the later hours of the New York session. And then, uh, of course, on the Asian Open for the, for the first half hour, first 15 minutes, gets a little bit of nice moves, but I stand the side on that and I, st I stand the side until London. Uh, and then I take, I've noticed uh, over time that the majority of my losses were coming uh, during the Asian trading session um, because of the low volume. And then uh, just focus in on the London and New York with, with the heavier volume discretionary and with the setups that we use here together. Uh, those are all coming from, from the New York session. As far as this week, I, I did make a mistake. I was stopped out of this trade right here prematurely. <clears throat> it was a big size trade too. This trade has already, and this was a small size trade. This small position trade, it was one third the size. has already covered that loss and, and then some now. And then we also got some profits here on, on gold. This is a, a smaller position. This is now breaking to below the 1460 uh, because gold just does have obviously a lot of uh, volatility to it. Yep. Um, it's really important. I'm glad you spoke about the liquidity because it's, it's really important. Uh, well, a couple of things are important. For... I'm really glad you spoke about the liquidity. A couple of things are very important. And that's first of all, trading uh, active markets. The more active the market you're trading, the more of your chances of having a successful trade. And this is the reason why, for example, should be standing aside right now on pairs that are just consolidating within this three week range. They're not active right now. There's no edge whatsoever. Um, now, of course you could see that the Euro US dollar is the most active, right? You have this nice downtrend this week, this, this entire uh, week, it seems. And we're trading at the lows of it currently. Now we are getting close to coming into this support. So we're going to watch that area to see what happens. That is absolutely a take profit area. We we'll want to be looking. If price does fall below quickly below the support. Well, then it becomes a hold, right? So the first thing to do is just watch as how price reacts coming into any type of take profit area. It is obviously a, being a Friday morning, a slower day than normal. I don't see too much else going on. Um, it looks like I will be wrapping up my day at uh, 11 o'clock Eastern time um, or even sooner. 
just hold on to these these open trades. I want to see how this specifically how gold is real as is acting at that time. Whether or not I'm going to take profit and get out of this trade. I, Peter, I remember, and you know what? I think I remember you closed your trade yesterday, right? I think right around here, um, around fourteen seventy. And because of the time of day you chose to close that, I thought that was really smart. I thought that was really smart um, because you 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 happened to close it at a, at a time of day around the London close when prices sometimes reverse trends. So. Uh, and, and that's what I'm looking to do similar today. I, I personally was looking to see how price acted at this level over here on a test of this. If we got down to 1460, it's where we are right now. Uh, so again, if, if we don't get any movement in the next, I'll, you know, I'll call it 90 minutes um, or less, then if we don't get a break below that, I'll close mine also. Uh, there's nothing wrong with taking profits, especially the way you did it. I thought that was was a smart move. Well played. I'm interested. It was brought up yesterday about the news overnight on the euro on France and Germany. I'm interested to see how those played out. You see that we ha we did have a beat out of Germany, slight beat. And the numbers came in um, that even in France. Normally what happens, uh, where's the where's the one of France, this uh, French. Normally what happens, this, this number always comes in five minutes earlier and the market will react off of this one generally with a bigger move than this one. Then even though it's Germany, uh, normally the, how the numbers come in out of France is giving the, the signal for how they're coming in for the for the EU. Um, so I, I didn't I didn't personally didn't think those numbers were would affect the euro whatsoever. If there was a large beat or a large miss, then obviously they could have had a higher higher impact. Gold is is just toying with me. It's almost stuck in the mud right now. We do have the euro still trading at its lows for the day and the week. So let me just pull up a weekly chart. So you can see that we are closing at the low of the week. There's no reason to get out of that trade. Although, um, just the type of pair it is, you could see that you don't really get too often any uh, multi-week movement. Over here you did, you had three weeks in a row of an up move, but you get a lot of chop on the Euro US dollar, a lot of chop. Either which way, this trade right now is still a short, price is moving in, in, in our favor, closing at the weekly lows, uh, just staying staying everything according to the game plan, which is looking for a take profits in this area. Trading a little bit, I really don't know how to read the calendar. Yeah, let's take a look at the, at the Forex calendar. So the first thing that I do personally is I go over to this filter and I only keep the red high impact news events on my calendar. Now, absolutely there are many times that this orange which is you know a medium impact news event will move the will move, will move the currency pair i focus on the on the red ones and i also know generally what happens is it's normally central banks that really change the trend of currency pairs in the markets right um i'm not saying right now obviously the the US economy, everyone is focused on whether or not the consumer is going to hold, right? The consumer is keeping the economy up, manufacturing is in, in decline. And if we get any type of big retail sales misses, that's going to affect the market. Uh, I'm always focused on, on the manufacturing numbers. 
course, I mean, non, non-farm payrolls is not moving the market at all right now, either which way, uh, still always aware of it, but it's the central bank meetings right now that move the markets. And those are the ones that I focus in on, um, specifically the FOMC and the ECB, uh, either which way. Yesterday we had, uh, out of England, we had uh, the Bank of England monetary policy report. There were two uh, board members that were looking for a rate cut that moved the pair. But what you want to do, what, well, what I do is I have all of the high impact news events for the week. I always over the weekend look ahead and see what's going on for the week ahead, right? For example, out of New Zealand, we have the central bank meeting with, uh, they're expected to lower rates. That's probably why we're seeing that weakness that we're seeing as well in the New Zealand dollar this week, right? Um, We have, let's see. That's all I really see, except on next Friday, we have core retail sales and retail sales. And again, as, as just mentioned, if there is a big miss or a big beat, a big beat would be really positive uh, for the US dollar and a big miss would be really negative. So this is probably the most important event I see going into next week. It's next Friday and it's the retail sales. Um, you have CPI on Wednesday out of the US. Uh, you know, I don't really think the Fed is really too concerned right now on the, on the, on the CPI and where it's at. They're kind of, making up the numbers and doing whatever they want. Uh, so um, for me, it's, it's the focus on the retail sales and just aware that we have the central bank meeting um, on the New Zealand dollar at a New Zealand next week. Uh, those are CPI could move the market, but those, those are the ones to watch. So the calendar is used uh, as a guide to know. You don't want to get, yeah, I can make a video on it. You don't want to get into you don't want to get into a trade, for example. You don't want to be trading New Zealand dollar, not aware that there is a central bank meeting coming up on Tuesday, right? Because what a lot of new new traders will get into a trade uh, Tuesday during the day in the New York session, not aware that there's a central bank meeting coming up and they're going to get stopped out of their position on the volatility for sure, all right? Gold just barely below. Uh, do you see we've seen all morning that the US dollar versus the Japanese yen was holding this breakout level, this breakout of resistance right here and last week's range right here. And it seems to be now even rising a little bit more. That's definitely a positive trade to be looking at and holding. Uh, I got stopped out of that trade. That looks like it's it for today, guys. There's, you know, aside from holding and managing whether it's the US dollar, Japanese yen, uh, gold, or the euro US dollar, there's not anything else going on this morning. I'm not, I, I'm gonna, and then I'm gonna need to get an alert. I don't have an alert set on the pound US dollar. But outside of a break of this level right here, of this support right here, right, of 1.2795, 1.279, um, I'm not looking to get into a, a, a trade today. If this level does break today, I, I will get into it because I believe that if this does break, the pair should break down. Doesn't look like it's gonna happen today. The pound is actually trading in a doji. It's trading basically where price opened up and why the dollar is strong today. The pound is showing strength against it, relative strength compared to all the currency pairs. So I don't see uh, anything at all. 
We do have probably the most movement today on the US dollar Canadian dollar. And that is a nice long. Has anyone gotten into it? I, uh, and we've been talking about it all week. I'm just simply not looking for any type of longs on this pair. I'll be looking for shorts once we get up in this area right here, which is pretty nice overhead resistance. Um, if we clear this, then I would be looking for longs, right? If I get into short trades from anywhere from halfway to this range towards the top, I have a really, really well-defined risk level where I know I'm wrong on the trade and get out. And then if I do get out, I could wait and start getting in long. But right now, um, the Canadian dollar has performed well versus the US dollar compared to a lot of other currencies. I'm just going to wait on that and wait until I get a nice entry up in here. Patience and planning pays off. Again, this is the one I'm watching to see if I'm going to take profits on or not. Well, that's it for today, everyone. I, I, I do thank you for, for being here with me. I enjoy the time we spend together. I hope you all have a fantastic weekend. I will be spending uh, later this afternoon some time putting together a weekly forecast, preparing for the week ahead next week. Do look out for that tomorrow morning. Uh, we will look to meet up again on Monday morning at nine o'clock in the morning uh, to go ahead and trade that session together. Um, that's it. It's a slow morning time to get an extra cup of coffee and just, uh, just enjoy the day. All right. Was there anything else anyone was, was looking at or watching? I mean, I know we've covered everything together. Um, I, I do like obviously my game plan, but sometimes you miss things. If we're missing something, I would like to know. Definitely, there is, there is opportunity today. I mean, there's opportunity on both the Australian dollar and Japanese yen and, and New Zealand dollar, Japanese yen, as well as on the US dollar, Canadian dollar, right? Um, I'm not, I, for, for me, I, we stood aside on all these pairs because again, this is trading within this range, this consolidation for three weeks now it's been here. So although you have this nice, huge down move today, we're not involved in it. Um, we, we consciously stepped aside on this breakout yesterday, which is proven, proven so far to look like a fake breakout. Hey, welcome. Hey, that's great. That's fantastic. And that's exactly why we post the replay. So you could take a look at it. And you know what, Raj, this was actually a great little day to go ahead and, and see why we're not looking for any new positions today and why we're just managing our, our open ones. A lot of traders think because they're traders that they need to be trading all the time. And that's, that's not the case. If that's not the case, you're going to make a lot more money just waiting and picking your setups, right? And, and that's the way to do it. It's really, it's really about planning and preparation, right? And then taking action and executing when it's the right time. Hey, Peter, you're, thank you guys. I enjoy being here with you guys. That's the truth. This is our first week. We started streaming live on Tuesday, and uh, you know this is all. This is our first week. I'm I'm going to be doing this every day. You know, it's a lot more fun doing it with people than doing it yourself. Uh, doing it anyway, and uh, you know this type of preparation, this type of planning, it only helps you improve your performance. It helps you improve your profits. Sure. Um, Absolutely. I'll check that out right now today.
again, this is like a cup of coffee morning. There's not much going on and that's good. Don't make things happen when they're not happening. Don't force things. Anytime you try to force a trade or force the market, I do see that gold is coming up now, right? It's trading above that 1460 area. And I'm going to look, uh, complexion, still have another hour. I'm gonna give it the hour. I'm gonna wait until 11 o'clock Eastern time. And at 11 o'clock Eastern time, if that's trading above 1460, I'm gonna exit the trade. It's, it's, and I'm conflicted right now. My instincts are possibly want to exit right now. Um, but to be honest, it was also, I had set that, I had set that, uh, that limit order. I got into trade. I was, I wasn't even really uh, aware that I got into that trade and that I had set that trade accordingly yesterday morning. Um, I'm going to stop down now back at entry. It's a free trade. I'm going to let it go uh, to 11 o'clock. And if it's above 14, 16, 11 o'clock, I'll just close the trade. Happy to be holding this one. And, and I hope early next week, I get to be looking to take profit here. All right, everyone, have a beautiful weekend. And I hope to see you all on Monday.